dinner time. Not without the farm. Not without water. Fertile ground. Or machines to plow it. Not without safekeeping. Distribution. And a top up every now and then. Not without the wholesaler. The retailer. Or the bank that backs them all. Dinner time. Not without business. Stand it back. It can be. And welcome to a very chilly Durban this evening. We welcome both the guests present here at Coastlands Umhlanga. And of course, those joining us live this evening for yet another spectacular celebration of the Standard Bank KZN Top Businesswomen 2021. Now, this initiative is the second such event. The first event was held in 2019. While the 2020 event was postponed due to COVID regulations and, of course, health concerns. While COVID-19 limits the number of people present, we are also afforded a wonderful opportunity to be more inclusive and allow friends, families, employees, employers to be part of the proceedings at home or at work. So the theme for the 2021 event is Women Inspiring Women. Standard Bank KZN Top Businesswoman 2021 provides an opportunity to recognize some of the industrious and enterprising business leaders, entrepreneurs, employees, and social change makers in the province of KwaZulu Natal. Now, the business was the business world in full swing of talented and dedicated women who ran successful businesses and or other organizations and enterprises, making a real impact on the industry or in the community while very often also juggling the very needs of their families making them multifaceted and of course multi-talented now the goal is to recognize the achievements of standard bank kzn top business women through sharing their stories now this year the standard bank kzn top business women were introduced in a series of three streamed webinars which i hope you all enjoyed now they've been participating in video interviews as well as photographic sessions we have all seen the beautiful portraits that have been laid around here this evening of the wonderful women and what they did now, the women have had very different experiences. They are based on their individual circumstances, which have guided their career or business choices. Now, these women also identify themselves as mothers, daughters, sisters, as well as business people, entrepreneurs, sportspersons, and community activists, which will indicate their ability to multitask, like I said before, multi-talented. Now, all these women have shared their many ups and downs, their wins, their losses. All the women have incredible insights to offer, which showcases the individual and universal type of women we have here this evening joining us for the Standard Bank KZN Top Business Women. 
Now, um, all of these women have shared their many ups and downs, like I said before. But then, of course, this evening, they're here to celebrate uh, their uh, world doings in the business here in KZN. Their strengths, of course, and they've been able to draw upon them as women. Now, other women also need to know these stories so they can clear the image of this fairy tale lie from their minds. When other women see the road that has been traveled is very similar to the ones that they are currently traveling, they'll perhaps start to believe that the power to reach their own goals and be inspired to follow their own dreams and ambitions. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the Standard Bank KZN Top Businesswoman for 2021. And in no particular order, they are Catherine Clark. Claudette Sigamani. We also have Dawn Dunn. Donna Barnard. She's world renowned and known as Dr. Shezi, that is Dr. Nomusa Shezi. We also do have S.A. Reddy. One of our ladies this evening is also Fatima Mula. <laughs> Fauzia Pia. <laughs> Faye Halstead. <laughs> Famada Shamam. <laughs> Kim Woods. Laura Kelly. <laughs> Lindsay Hopkins. <laughs> we also do have this evening Judy Stewart. <laughs> Another round of applause for Louisa Garland. Miriam Manick, <laughs> Marilyn Biester, <laughs> Monique Labat, <laughs> Nomfundo Mgoi, <laughs> Nomfundo Kaba. <laughs> Nozibele Sogoni, Nozuko Basson, <laughs> Portia Damini, <laughs> Sam Watt, known as Say What, <laughs> Tandy Ngongo, <laughs> Tobeka Dongolo, <laughs> and lastly, Tracy Harker. Thank you very much. Now, Portia Mtembu has been in the employ of Standard Bank for the past 17 years. Now, during this time, Portia has fulfilled various roles within the bank and successfully led big Standard Bank branches in KZN and has ensured their financial growth and sustainability. In 2019, Portia was recognized with a mark of excellence trip to Brazil, which was a true testament of hard work and persistence. Now, she previously worked as a distribution manager for the Dolphin Coast area and has recently been promoted to head private clients within a client's high net worth in the Msuduzi area. This is Portia. Thank you to everyone who has made the time to be here with us at this wonderful location in Durban. And to those who are joining us virtually for the Standard Bank KZN Top Women in Business 2021. 
as an organization that strives to drive gender diversity and female empowerment on the continent, Standard Bank welcomes the opportunity to recognize phenomenal female business leaders who have all made an impact in their respective communities and contributed to the economic growth of the province overall. It allows us to stop for a moment and to praise the efforts of our sisters in this part of the country who are not only progressing women empowerment but bringing prosperity to communities by impacting the lives of others who find themselves in less fortunate positions. That said, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate and honor all the KZN businesswomen who are all contributing to all business landscape, to their families and to that of others in amazing, amazing ways. They're making a mark in the business across a variety of sectors, challenging traditional notions and bringing innovative solutions and ways of thinking. Their emotional intelligence, passionate, collaborative, supportive, and sensitive natures are helping to bring positive change, to redefine aspects of our society, and to create a level playing field for all. We must ask ourselves the question, how do we go about empowering more women, especially from the rural areas? These are women who were not afforded the opportunity to grow up in Model C schools, or higher learning institutions where they have learned how to articulate themselves or present an idea. If we are to create a culture of women empowerment on a grander scale, it means bridging the gap between the privileged and underprivileged. We must create an environment where everyone gets a chance to access opportunities to develop themselves despite their social standing in society. We go on about women empowerment, but how can we become empowered if we are not empowering ourselves? We need to take a hard look at our personal development. And if you find that there is something that you are lacking in order for you to progress, make sure that you do something about it. We must consider ways to ensure that the barrier is broken. It's about asking the question, if I am a woman, and I'm heading a company, am I really empowering women um, under me and leaving a legacy for others that come after me? In the corporate environment, a woman's climb to the top is a lonely journey. For us to get there, it takes 10 times more work and effort to be recognized than it does for our male counterparts. At the end of the day, men are still making most of the decisions and men are still limiting women in terms of their progress in the corporate environment. I've had various male mentors who have helped develop me along my career path and the learnings that have come from those experiences have certainly helped shape my abilities, especially from a strategic perspective. But in my experiences with female mentors, I found that I was able to relate to them better and that they better understood the challenges that I had in my space and helped me to become better equipped in that space. The Standard Bank KZN Top Businesswoman platform is a perfect breeding ground for female to female support and mentorship to take place. It is a broad initiative that includes those who are just starting out to those who are veterans in their respective fields of business. The platform brings together a host of ladies with the host of products on offer and we can take this as an opportunity to try support our fellow sisters, business and in turn lubricate the grow the female economy. But what does it mean to truly support one another? It is not something we should simply talk about but be deliberate about it in terms of our efforts and engage with each other at a business level. And that is how sisters support each other. Indeed, the Standard Bank KZN Top Business Women event is an invaluable platform for networking and mentorship to take place. There are also various programs out there for women to utilize to develop themselves. Sometimes as ladies, we think that we are self-sufficient, but we do need that mentorship. And mentorship comes from someone you aspire to be. It usually works wonders. In the very same token, the women who have climbed the ladder or find success must make a deliberate effort 
to pull up those women who come to them and look at it as part of giving back. Uh, that will carry weight, add value, and bring sustainable long-term outcomes. As Standard Bank, we're honored to once again take part in an initiative that highlights the significant positive strides that women in the province are taking, serving as inspiration to other women to come, changing traditions and making a wider impact on the communities in which we serve. In closing, I'd like to leave you with the following quote. The secret of change is to focus all energy, not on fighting the old, but in building the new. I thank you. Well, rightfully so, that does deserve a standing ovation. I like what she said when she spoke about whether you're a startup or a veteran business, we're all here gathered together as one, and it's our duty to empower each other. And the most important word she mentioned was sisterhood. So, yeah. Speaking about sisterhood, I do know that quite a couple of you have been enjoying another sister in business uh, during the webinars. Now, the Standard Bank uh, KZN Top Business Women webinars have been facilitated by action coach Marlene Powell. Now, Marlene became action coach's first woman business coach in South Africa. Marlene is a specialist in her field. She is a certified business coach providing help, advice, coaching and mentoring services to small and medium-sized businesses. Marlene believes she is living her dream and her personal brand is defined by precision in all that she does. So it is not surprising that the Westville-based franchise has consistently been topped, I repeat, in the top 100 in the world. Absolutely fantastic. Now, Malene has recently been awarded the Action Coach Southern Africa Brand Personality 2021 award at the Action Coach National Conference. Marlene also attributes her success to discipline and consistency. And significantly, Marlene says that success revolves around one word, action. And we literally took a part to take action and help our clients to do the same, says Marlene. Results must be forthcoming or else what's the point? I hold my clients accountable for their results and just like a sports coach, push them to perform at optimum level. So she's not the Springbok coach, not the Mamrodi Sundowns coach, but she is action coach Marlene Powell. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, wow, thanks. So you can see I'm definitely not in sport. Uh, <laughs> Um, just welcome everybody and it's so nice to be here today and actually to see all 30 of you ladies in person. Um, what's absolutely amazing is, is that a couple of years ago when this was run, it was all uh, face to face here, it was at the venue, but now we've got access to everybody out there online, which we would never have had. So sometimes there's been some good that's come out of COVID. And uh, what they always say around COVID is, please, guys, whatever you learned last year, I find so many people are going back to the old ways. Please don't. Now, I think what's important about these three webinars that we had, um, for me, what was so amazing is the fact that most of the ladies didn't put their name up. Somebody nominated them. And sometimes we have to be pushed out of our comfort zones to be recognized. And then when you do get put on the podium, it actually feels quite cool because <laughs> you get recognized. But the thing is, our ladies are also our best kept secrets because we don't get to hear their stories. And uh, Standard Bank KZN Top Business Woman has allowed that opportunity and provided a platform for that. So please, can we give our ladies a hand um, for what they've done? All right, so I'm done. Are we ready? Oh, we definitely are ready. So we're going to then uh, engage and, of course, uh, as we said, celebrate uh, the top businesswoman in KZN. The most important factor is that we salute and recognize every single woman here this evening. We salute 
and recognize every single woman who is here this evening. Now, we are taking another step and asking six of you ladies to please, uh, you know, join us and share aspects of your stories on the following categories. Now, the first category would be the courage to realize a dream. Second category, exceeding customer expectations and delivering brilliant experiences. And our third category, operating effectively and productively. So, it's almost like a draw out of a hat, but there's going to be three ladies who would please do us the honor of joining us, myself and Marlene, on stage. And that is Nomfundo Ngoi, CEO of Ikeboletu Group. May we please also have the honor of being joined by Tandi Ngongo, Tandekile Projects. <laughs> and lastly, may we please call up Fatima Muller from Smart Exchange Centre Manager in Port Shepston. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us this uh, evening. Um, of course, we're going to start with our first panel session, so uh, the next three ladies also need to prepare themselves. Let me start with yourself, Nomfundo. Now, you have had an amazing journey to get to where you are today. And, um, you know, how did you manage to accomplish these dreams, especially also now as we traverse these tough times with COVID-19? It hasn't been a... a oh. Good evening, everyone, Good evening. first. <laughs> I'm still shocked and <laughs> excited. Thank you, Standard Bank. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, it hasn't, mine hasn't been an easy journey. Uh, looking at it, that from the beginning, I never even had financial assistance when I started the business. But with five people, 2009, December, started a business, I had a vision, it was just me, but I had a great team. And 11 years later, we are 1,500, wow. more than 100 branches in KZN, 120 actually. Wow. We're in the United Kingdom in an international space that is not easy to work in with too many regulations. We made it. It hasn't been an easy journey, but with a great team that understands the vision, that supports you. It, it is, it's better to work in that in, environment because if you're working with people that are against you, you're not going to achieve the, the vision. People that compete with you because you know when we, especially with this black empowerment, black empowerment, you find our own blacks trying to compete yeah. with us as as CEOs, oh, yes, <laughs> they, they're competing with us, you know, it, too many things happen in a business, but yes, it hasn't been in this journey, but we managed. I love the fact that you described it as team workers, dream workers, you mentioned your team quite a lot, so you've got a great team there. It's a very great team, and that understood the vision, that was, that gave it all that gave it all to, to, to make sure that we deliver. Especially, uh, 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 my industry is a men's industry. It's male-dominated. I'm in the funeral space, actually, yeah. just to explain a bit. I'm in the funeral space. We, we do funeral insurance. We do burials. It's able to funerals. It's able to group now because we have more companies within the group. And, you know, when I started, um, I, I, I was nominated in a committee. There were like 11 males. I was the only female. Every time I would say something, even if it made sense, I had to say it twice or thrice yeah. before. They even listened to what I was saying, to even think that it made sense. Or sometimes they wouldn't even, even look at it. But if another male is rephrasing it, then they would say, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it makes sense. <laughs> And I would feel, and, and also I was nominated as a chaplain because, you know, women, we're known to be praying, 
<laughs> you know, just that role, just an add-on. Not those important ones, secretary, treasurer. Yeah. No, no, not those. Those are for men. Yeah. Me, I was just a, a praying woman. And I was just praying in my corner, and I made it. And right now, I had, um, I'm chairperson of all undertakers in the province. I sit in the national structure. Not because I'm a woman, because I earned it. Mm. I worked hard um, at what I do. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I love that, that men respect me. Um, now I'm from, I'm from Joburg. Yeah. A day ago, um, last weekend, I received a, a, an award from IAFT, those international awards at the at Langeni. And then they were presented at the conference. We had a conference for three days, Monday to yeah. Wednesday. I had a standing ovation for the first time within my organization. All men. It's a room of 95% of men standing up for me to say, you are doing well at what you are doing. And those are the same men I was with 10 years ago yes. that did not believe in me, that said, oh, she's not going to make you. know women. Women, they love things. <laughs> women, you know women, they, think, they always think they do better. And I didn't listen to that. I did my thing. And here I am, Mr. Boletu is where it is today, and it's going places. To more standing ovations is known for you. Amen. To more of this. When you look at, well, first of all, what men wear down there, we wear up here. So we're stronger. Anyway, besides that, but what I wanted to ask you is, is when you look at your team, do you not have a reflection on yourself and look back and say, you were the leader of that team? So what is it that you have that inspires your team to be the best team that you've got? Because it starts with you. Yes, my team knows me that I'm a very hands-on person. Um, even up to today, I still know everything that happens in the business. It may be good or bad, I know. <laughs> but it's, it's my passion. What I do, I love. I love, I love giving, caring for families, um, giving those dignified funerals and all of that. My team knows that I know everything they're doing. And every time, I would, I would just pop in, pop uh, out of the blue, just random visits at these funerals at all these events, they love, they love seeing me. They love seeing that I'm still with them. Even if the business grows, yeah. there's money involved, you know, we grow to another level, but I'm still there with them. I still talk to them and, and, and motivate them all the time to do better, to make sure that they excel at what they do, because in our business, it's about excellence. It's about excellence. It's about an eye for detail. I still say, text them, guys, you know, I saw some pictures, they change that, change this. They will say, hey, party, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they call me party. Party is behind us. She sees everything we do. I love that. I'm always part of them. I'm always encouraging them to do better, to make sure that whatever is in my heart, because I cannot be with all those families, but they represent me. They represent the vision, and I make sure that they deliver exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Now, a little bit of a tidbit for everybody joining us online from at home, at work, wherever you are across the country. Uh, we obviously called up the ladies to be here on stage, but I did notice by the corner of my eye, Sis Tandy was so surprised when we called up. You were busy taking pictures. <laughs> Yes, I was a bit surprised when I was called <laughs> up. I didn't know I'll be on the top six to share my story, and I'm very honoured. We'd love to hear your story, Sis Tando. And, uh, Tandi, and I think we all know that uh, your BP garage yes. is known to exceed customer expectations and delivering brilliant experiences. How do you ensure that is the norm till today that you're known for your customer service? Um, for me, uh, running a male-dominated industry, you know, most of you guys will know that BP Morode is still a male-dominated industry. Um, it's still a, a man's garage. It's only three females who are doing the back office. But in terms of the front line, it's still all male. Um, we are known for exceeding customer service quite right. Um, I think for me, it is because of the team that I work with. I make sure that they are capacitated 
so that they can deliver on their expectation from the customer. And, um, uh, you know, working with the team at the garage, you really need to break things down to a level where they can easily understand so that they can relate better with the customer. You know, it, it doesn't um, always work that you would have a, a bigger strategy. You really need to break it down so that they can um, offer that service to a customer that really exceeds um, their, their expectation. So it's the great team that I work with there, um, which is which is changing because we're introducing females. Because right. honestly, there is not there are, there are no industries that are set aside for male. We can do anything that we want as long as we know our story. Because as Usis Nomfunde has said, we need to earn you know our respect. We're not there just because we're females. We, we're there because we know what we're doing and we are doing it well. And it shows by the customers that always come back at BP More Road and by those, um, because we have a, a very huge online presence, so we do get feedback from customers in terms of the service that we offer. And of course, we'd have a constructive um, feedback, which we act on all the time because we believe in continuous improvement for the business. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Fabulous stuff. Isn't there a trend coming through about a team? Mm. Yes. And it's quite interesting, either you can do this on your own, or you have to have a team to help you get to where you want to go. And you just don't have one business, you've got quite a few. Yes. All right, yes. excellent. But what's amazing as well with you is, is that if you're really giving exceptional customer service and you only have men in the ground, can you imagine what service you'll be giving when you bring women in? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I always say that. I always say that because they, they were saying, um, no, they're also calling me party. No, party. this is not, the females won't, won't be able to do this. And I'm like, watch the space. Let's introduce females. You will see. We'll take this garage into a higher level. But isn't it sad that us as women have to work harder? to get anywhere that we need to, and it actually makes us so much stronger. Exactly, exactly. And even the process of acquiring that BP More Road, it was so intense. And we, as women, we have to prove ourselves all the time. Yeah. All the time. I'm coming from a corporate space where I was a leader there. You know, we have to prove ourselves twice as much as males. But we are doing that. That's why we are here. That's why we're being recognized. <laughs> we can do it well. Took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. You are absolutely correct. Now I'm actually wondering if Usis Nomfunens is tiny umpati. Should I say umpati Fatima? Now Fatima, you've been recognised for operating effectively and productively. Um, what has been your key driver in ensuring success? I mean, I think you heard both the ladies talking about the team around you, really making sure that uh, you shine as a business. What has really stood out for you? Good evening, everyone, and thank you for recognizing me. My heart's really thumping at the moment, <laughs> if you can hear it, so that's what it I is. I can't hear it. <laughs> Firstly, thank you to both uh, my parties. Yeah, you guys have spoken the, the language. It's, it's as though each of the ladies here is speaking the language of every, other, of, of every woman. It's that deep story that resonates within all of us. It's the story about wanting following our dreams and wanting to prove ourselves, wanting to do what's best, not only for ourselves, but for our family, our community, the people around us, and also trying to be the best in our workplace. And thank you so much for bringing that out because you've made my answer so very much easier now. <laughs> okay, I joined Smart Exchange uh, when Smart Exchange was ready to set up a an incubation in, a small, in the small town of Port Shepston. Many of you may know our beautiful town. I always do the tourist pitch for it. <laughs> and uh, yes, and within a year, we managed to exceed our target that was set for three years. And that was phenomenal because we came into the small town against odds. There was a lot against us, but we were so blessed. And I was so blessed to have the support from the Smart Exchange main head office in Durban from the team there. And it, it was absolutely great. We set up this beautiful center and we had SMMEs streaming in, wanting to join us. And I can say that these past six years, there's been a lot of work that goes behind uh, managing an incubator. I started off as the manager of this incubator, a center manager, so I would work hands-on with my SMMEs. And always remember, SMMEs from a small town are different from SMMEs from the city. Their challenges are different. They're coming from different financial and social backgrounds. So our needs were different. But 
it, you know, God's always been on our side, and we've managed to excel as, as a small town incubator. And I must say this in all humility, whenever we do have the Smart Exchange SMME Awards, Pochepston takes 50% of the award. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is due to the hunger within the SMMEs that we support. Women and men alike, they want to succeed. And, and I think that's the important thing. They want to succeed. They want to make it out there. They also want to be big. So the journey, my journey has also evolved from uh, Port Shepston. I've been drawn a lot into the Durban uh, operations as well, because as Smart Exchange, we've really expanded into supporting new innovations. And this is an absolutely mind-blowing and exciting experience. So far, thus far, Smart Exchange has supported over 26 uh, innovations to grow and each one is so different but every innovation is there to have social impact to improve the lives of the people of South Africa to improve women children education health care and again you know the for even from Port Shepston we've developed I mean three beautiful innovations have come out from Port Shepston one that has one, uh, a health care solution that can have national impacts one in the logistic industry, so one in the agricultural industry. And, you know, I feel quite pleased to know that, like, I was behind these, you know. <laughs> I smiled to myself, okay, this is from Port Shepston. But that's, that's the journey. And now I've been drawn into our commercial uh, branch as well because we've activated that branch, and now we want to work to, uh, with developing township SMMEs and co-creating solutions that will improve the life of the people in townships. So that's been another, it's like another 360 for me. But it's absolutely amazing what's coming out from those projects as well. And today we, Smart Exchange was absolutely honored to be visited by the ministerial delegation because we had Minister Stella Abrahams who uh, launched the Youth Challenge Fund and it was done at Smart Exchange. And it was absolutely humbling for us because when she walked out, she looked at us and she looked at me Obviously, she said it to everyone, but she said, thank you for the good work that you are doing. Because she spoke one-on-one -on -one to our SMMEs, and they could see the value of the programs. That's, I mean, see, we have, so we've got government, CEDA, C4, all of us supporting us, but it's also the team that we have with. And we are proud. We have, in our team of 12, we have only three men. The rest are all women. <laughs> but I must say that we... From my, uh, the way I look at it, there is absolutely no male-female um, competition. Mm. We're all out there. We do what we have to do. We are driven by a very passionate CEO, Mr. Jonathan Naidu, and we owe a lot to him as well. And I must say that the Smart Exchange journey has really been, for me, a phenomenal journey. Passion for community. Yeah. And um, just to think again while we were talking is how it originally started. Yeah. And as employees, uh, we always look for those opportunities and hope that our employers give us the opportunity. Because if you think about where each one of us started, we would never have started our own businesses or got to where we were if there wasn't somebody behind us helping us along the way. So congratulations and well done. And we're making a difference to SMMEs for the future of our country, yeah? And it's up to each and every one of us to instill and be able to support them and give them what we can. Excellent. Well done. This was such an inspirational session. I don't want to go back home to Joburg. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. But I mean, I think it's also rightfully due for us to recognize yet another lady who's done absolutely fantastically well. Now, um, this lady would be Faye Halstead. Faye Halstead is the founder of Admore and creative director of Admore Ceramics Studio. Now, Faye Halstead is an academic and award-winning artist with manifest passion and tenacity. Among some of her awards, she and her protege, Bonin Jalinjali, jointly won the Standard Bank Young Artist Award back in 1990. 
Faye was awarded an honorary doctorate in 2006 from the University of Guazuru Natal. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm extremely, extremely elated for her. Faye is being awarded the South African Presidential Award, the Order of Ikamanga, for her contribution to the visual arts and generous transferring of skills to others. We'd also like to recognize her daughter, Catherine, who is with us here this evening. Now, Iman Repeti is an award-winning broadcaster, media leader, and communications specialist. In a decade-long career, Iman has worked in broadcasting as a senior anchor and specialist reporter, presenting breaking news, investigative journalism, talk radio, live events, print, and digital media. Iman is happiest when telling stories that reveal both the hardships and triumphs of communities around SA, just like the ladies here on the panel we're talking about today. Now, Iman has interacted with celebrities, senior politicians, thought leaders, but she continues to insist that it's always the conversations with communities on the ground, whether suffering or succeeding, that are the most powerful and provocative. Iman is also an acclaimed author of a memoir, Becoming Iman, released in 2008, and Sermons of Soul, released in 2020, and of course, mashing on politics, economics, philosophy, and life. Ladies and gentlemen, Iman. On the 11th of December 2020, my family was due to pack up and head off on a much needed holiday to Cape Town. It was my youngest daughter's 14th birthday. And after months of lockdown, she as well as the rest of our clan were rejoicing at the prospect of getting away and celebrating. But that morning, there were to be no cake and candles, no off-key happy birthday singing. I was struggling in bed, unable to breathe, my sick partner next to me also out of commission. Instead of reading birthday cards, we were reading with horror the results of our positive PCR exams. Instead of heading to the airport, I was sequestered in bed in disbelief and immense discomfort, battling to breathe. Two days later, my condition deteriorated and I checked into the hospital. For the first time in my life, I really confronted my own mortality. I'm always, I've always been an irritatingly sunny person. My disposition always tilts towards the light. Even in my worst moments, I always saw a way out from the valley to the summit, but not this time. I woke up one morning in that hospital bed, so scared that I would not leave on my own two feet. I struggled to go through the bathroom. Even a quick shower was an endless and exhausting labor. I could barely eat. And each day seemed to be the same worrying ballet. What are my oxygen levels? How is my blood pressure? What is the treatment? Will I make it? And I thought about the end. Because my father died in hospital when I was just 16. And I shall never forget the trauma of being called to say goodbye. And then to hear the awful news minutes later. I didn't want that for my own children. And I resolved to focus on getting better. I walked the corridors of Mill Park Hospital in pain and in agony, determined to force my body into staying above and not beneath this awful virus. Fortunately, after a week, I recovered just enough to go home, armed with handfuls of tablets to take several times a day. My health has taken various turns over the last couple of months, to the point that I had to make a radical life decision to change my lifestyle, my eating and exercise habits, to improve my heart, to stave off hypertension and diabetes. But the real gift of that journey was to become intentional about my choices, both personal and professional. Because I tell you, nothing focuses you like the loss of friends your own age. I mean, you know how it is when you're growing up. The people who died were the elderly, the sickly, not those in your peer group. The coronavirus has taken so many of our friends and colleagues, and for me, including people I studied and work with in various newsrooms. Their mortality and their grieving partners and children reminded me that a long life is not a guarantee. And so what was I going to do to maximize the life I have left? The opportunity I am yet to shape and take hold of 
while I can still breathe and move on my own. And it led me back to the fundamental question of what my purpose in this world is. For many, many years, I've built a career that has earned me awards, the respect of society and my peers, and I've interviewed some of the world's most famous and celebrated people, Gary Kasparov, Richard Branson, Oprah Winfrey. I've covered some of the most talked about stories over crime, politics, and current affairs. I have facilitated hard conversations about our economy, and I've worked with top CEOs and corporate executives in media training and strategy development. And I thought that was me all of me. Then I wanted to write and build more dimension around my talents. Luckily, international publisher Pan Macmillan was very interested in my life story and my first book reached the world in 2018 to rave reviews and critical acclaim. Becoming Iman was about growing up in apartheid South Africa to living in the Islamic Republic of Iran, studying to become a, a religious jurist and then leaving the salty city of Qom and traveling to the capital, Tehran, to work for the public broadcaster as a television and radio talk show host. And then returning to South Africa and launching my career here. And during this time, I had three children and a marriage that fell apart. As a storyteller, I'm very interested in the stories we tell about ourselves. Many of you have your story about who you are, mother, wife, partner, sister, daughter, widow, divorcee, business owner, service provider. We choose our headlines. I'm a survivor. I'm a creator. I'm a, you can add your own title. For myself, I didn't want to be the divorced mom who forced to, you know, who fought her way to provide for her children or the survivor of childhood domestic episodes that threatened my family or even the award-winning journalist and author or respected member of society. These titles or caricatures of ourselves force us and others to see the silos, not the connective tissue of all of us that make us and change us in each situation. The stuff that is not only about us as heroes, but as villains too in our own story. I often quip that when we bring ourselves to a situation, we either bring our archive of experience, which can help us navigate better, or we bring baggage. Stacks and stacks and stacks of old hoarded baggage that serve no purpose other than to keep us from seeing either over it or around it. And so much of who we are is defined and contained by the broad categories bordered by our race, our class, gender, our beliefs and our experiences. But they create the risk for us to see and be seen as just one thing. If we lack self-awareness, we bring our pathologies, our self-limiting beliefs and biases to every situation. In fact, I learned just the other day that there are over 170 biases that we carry with us wherever we go. Our confirmation biases, where our antenna is up and ready to seek out information that supports something we already believe, or avoiding information that may disprove our beliefs, or biases that limit our curiosity about things, that keep us feeling smarter than we actually are. Our cultural biases, that perceive other cultures as being abnormal or exotic when compared to our own. It feeds our stereotypes and traps us in self-recognition and acceptance and the exclusivity of our own groups. Here's another one, in-group bias, which keeps us believing what people in our own circles say and takes away our ability to be objective. Or this one, my personal favorite, the self-serving bias, the assumption that good things happen to us when we've done all the right things. But bad things happen to us because of circumstances outside our control or things that other people purport. And this bias results in a tendency to blame outside circumstances for our bad situations rather than us really taking personal responsibility. But we feather the nest of our comfort zone so effortlessly. Ah, this is me. This is my caricature. I can stop growing now. Change is uncomfortable. I know that. But our world in this pandemic is educating us differently. Our lives have been upended. How we work, live and play are being reshaped through the lens of chaos and continuous change. In a business class I was managing the other day, you hear just how many innovations have been catalyzed by the pandemic and the lockdowns. Cloud computing, which already existed but dramatically accelerated in its usage, changing the business models that we are used to, 
becoming a top foundation for agility, flexibility, and digital. You have financial process automation. A lot of you encounter this in your business. It's been catalyzed by new work structures and working from home. And it's causing more funding to be channeled towards supporting distributed workforces. We're moving to greater automation and focusing on strategic initiatives to really propel our businesses forward. You all know the streaming services just blew up. And the list is endless. Companies that couldn't or can't keep pace will see their existence threatened unless they are able to find their own relevance and build stamina through cultural and digital transformation. Isn't it incredible how design thinking has become a baseline blueprint for how companies are beginning to return to retrofitting what their business models dictate? Start with the customer, see what they need, establish empathy, build rapport, Include all stakeholders. Everything is connected. Listen more. Create room for failure. Build it into your strategy so that you can create and iterate. Friends, there's so much out there. But my next question is, how much is in here? How are you and I building resilience? How much are we challenging our own story? Is that everything you are? What door needs to be opened? What lock opened to go deeper and to reach higher? You know, I woke up early this morning and a low hum of energy began to build. I asked myself, so Iman, all these stories you tell yourself about yourself, how true are they? Because reality is a church you cannot hide in. It exposes you. It tests you. So I started with my own Bible and testimonies, back to my origin story. I grew up in KZN in a rich upper class suburb one you probably know, Reservoir Hills. We lived in a converted garage at the bottom of the property, sharing a bedroom with my parents, separated by that much loved piece of South African furniture, the room divider. We had a cold water shower suspended above a cement floor next to a toilet that got baptized every time we used it. My after school chores kept me sweeping and polishing and scrubbing or risk getting a hiding or a shouting at if my parents got home and the curtains were closed, or God forbid, the beds were still unmade. But those early disciplines taught me accountability and cleanliness and an appreciation for hard work. And then when we finally got on the housing list, we moved to our very first own home in Phoenix, Unit 13, complete with my own bedroom and hot water. The pride my parents had in moving forward imbued me with a deep sense of accomplishment and patience for the things that I would work for and achieve when I got older. But you know how it is with working class parents. They leave early, they return late, and you pretty much grow up on your own, having to fan your own flames of ambition and write dreams you have no way of knowing will ever come true. Growing up during apartheid kept you very aware of what you could and could not do, where you could and could not go and instilled a very warped concept of value based on color. The whiter, the better, the darker, the more disadvantaged. But instead of containing me, I saw these as challenges I had to understand, overcome, and grow from. I had to remove all the scar tissue from my childhood experiences that made me feel ugly and poor. The hair that wouldn't behave, the breasts that drew attention, the hips that rounded out a little more fully than others, the perception that mixed girls were to be avoided at all costs because hmm, their morality was questionable, or the perception that being Indian was something to be looked down upon. My community in Phoenix with its employed and unemployed, its joys and its violences, its generosity and its poverty were teachers to whom I owe much of what I have become. A determination was growing for me to achieve an extraordinary life. I quite didn't quite know how I was going to get there. It took a great deal of sacrifice for me to be able to study, to begin to understand that my world could be more than just what I saw around me. That was a key lesson in seeing beyond the material, seeing into hope and possibility, seeing that the limitations thrust upon me were holograms I had the power to push away. There is another lesson that has been the longest to learn, the one about really connecting to who I am and how that parallels with what is expected of us in society. I know many of you might be mothers and wives or partners. What we are not told is that we have the choice to reframe the picture of what defines us as women. I love my children with all my heart. 
I helped create them and I'm still helping to shape them. But I sit them down and remind them that the title of parent or spouse or partner is an optional one. We don't have to have children and be married to complete our story here on earth. Some of us are better being great uncles and aunties. And we can love other people's children and show them generosity. Be their guides without feeling as if this is a key milestone on our journeys. I wish someone had told me when I was younger that marriage and children were serious commitments not to be taken lightly or to be conformed to. Who knows? Would I have chosen differently? As I embarked on my journalism career, born mostly out of a need to tell people stories, shine a spotlight on the myriad experiences, the triumphs and the tragedies that make up daily life, I wanted to do what gave my life meaning. And for a long time, journalism did. Until it didn't. I just grew so tired of the great sadness of injustice that threatened to engulf my spirit and the desolation I felt from telling yet another story of grotesque system failure and corruption I decided it was time to hang up my microphone. I began to think, what could I do differently to alter the economic circumstance of people? How could I use my talents to create impact somewhere else? And thus it is that my business focuses on developing companies to build strategies that authentically and credibly focus on inclusivity and diversity. Companies that are more accountable to the communities in which they operate and who are committed to real change and impact that translates into economic health for more and more people in our country. I have been changing over these last few months, squirming in my chrysalis, waiting for the morning that I will take flight into this new life of my design, and again questioning my own beliefs about myself. Is it too late at 39, <coughs> 49, uh, to start something new? Do I really follow my principles? Do I continue to interrogate those principles and still find them to be relevant? And these are the existential questions that put me to bed at night and wake me up again the next morning. The next chapter, as I write myself into the future, is about taking everything I know about myself and re-auditing what I still believe to be true and what needs to be lovingly left behind. I have been the quintessential peace broker, whether in my home or in my environment, because I believe that dialogue solves everything and that everything can be destined to end well. But I've been leaving that behind. Sometimes you have to risk damage and broken relationships when people won't do what they say they will, when the truth becomes uncomfortable. Any relationship worth the trouble is one based on transparency and integrity. Follow through, do what you said you would do, or help me understand why you can't. Stay in the room, or I'm going to walk. I'm more focused on retaining what is real and committed and valuable than one that keeps the picture but is steadily decomposing underneath because time is short. The gallery of lost friends and loved ones grows every day. Their funeral flyer pictures show them smiling at me. A reminder that life can be very short and I am refusing to go to the grave with any what ifs in my heart because we can only regret what we have never attempted. That lost love, that relationship worth saving, that adventure you've been dying to have, that weight you've wanted to lose, the career change you have been dying for. There's this weird thing that's left over from watching the women in my family and community, and maybe you can relate to this, the martyr or the savior complex, those women who gave everything to everyone else, who sacrificed for everyone else, while at the same time imploring us to live our dreams. They didn't teach that lesson by example because their own dreams were buried in the backyard under the rubble of discarded household items and euthanized ambition. But we laud that trait. We comfort ourselves with it as we rock to and fro on the carpet, weeping for our own dreams that we shelved, feeling sad, disillusioned and neutralized. And I am learning that old lesson they teach you when you embark on a flight. Put on your own oxygen mask first before reaching out to help others. If you don't, you risk your own life and the life of others. I'm learning that I'm no one's savior, nor should I be required to be. I owe it to myself to reconnect to the dreamer, the artist, the freer self, so that I can be fuller with enough to share. 
When I left two very successful careers to start my business, I could not have anticipated the struggle, the sleepless nights, the uncertainty. But it's become the gymnasium in which I stress test my earlier beliefs. Can I recreate? Do I have stamina? Am I brave and courageous? Who knows what is to come? But as I talk to you now, there's a sparkle in my eye and a fire in my heart. <laughs> Everything that has happened to me until this point has built the launch pad for what is next. My engines are accelerating, my, sh my safety checks are complete, my coordinates are set and I am ready for takeoff into a multiverse of uncharted territories and new adventures till I reach my own, the end. And I invite you to look into the sky, see beyond the blue and to the what's next in your story. And may you ever be beautiful and strong and free. Wow, Iman, absolutely fantastic. She was so poetic, so eloquent, but most importantly, so real. And I think that all the ladies, whether joining us online or with us here at Coastlands, you can take at least one leaf out of what she said here this evening. Now, we did mention that we're going to be having a second panel. So I'd like to welcome yet again my partner in crime, Marlene. <laughs> And then um, in our next panel discussion, the topics that we're going to be discussing are fostering a culture of empowerment and diversity, making a difference in the business and community, and being a woman extraordinaire given to a business person who has demonstrated exemplary business achievements, industry influence, and is a true inspiration to others. Ladies and gentlemen, may we please have joining us on our panel discussion, Dr. Shezi, Specialist Neurologist at Albert Lutuli. <laughs> may we also please be joined by Lindsay Hopkins, Humanitarian, KZN Operations Manager for SA Harvest. And lastly, SA Ready, Group CEO, RR Group. Thank you, ladies. I've already seen you today on the cover of the newspaper, SA. <laughs> Let me uh, start with uh, Dr. Shezi. Now, Dr. Shezi, as a trailblazer, a female neurologist, how do you see yourself in a, as a role model for other women who want to actually foster this culture of empowerment and diversity, especially with uh, what you do? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I was just here to experience this. Mm, I wasn't expecting surprise, surprise. Um, to come up here. Um, thank you for the question. Um, as, a, as a neurosurgeon, um, how do I foster uh, this culture of empowerment? It's, um, it's, it's very difficult to answer because when you're going through um, the process, you are not necessarily thinking about the culture yeah. um, and how to change it. So for me, the lessons that I have learned in being a, in a very male-dominated um, uh, sphere, I know that's something we're going to repeat through the night, but um, I'm, I'm the only female specialist neurosurgeon um, operating for the um, government um, of six males, and I think three in this province. And the training has been such that you always have a male to look to to train you. So in medicine especially, it is a training by not only your own academic training, personally reading books, but also it is an apprenticeship. You have to have someone see you as themselves, um, see you on the other side as a specialist, even as you are going through the training. So through my experiences, sometimes painful, sometimes 
Um, as a female, um, you walk into a space already knowing people expect you to be emotional, to have outbursts, and then they push those buttons and step back and watch for the bomb. And so you learn <laughs> to master the emotions and find where the bathrooms are early so that you contain those emotions. Um, what I have done since qualifying and having gone through the processes of feeling the, the pain of being the only one, and I think Sister uh, Nofundo uh, mentioned this, which I, I related to so much, where you can say something four times, and everyone is like, mm, and then one person <laughs> who happens to be an XX chromosome says, um, XY chromosome says exactly the same thing. And it's like, that's so interesting, John. <laughs> we never thought of that. And you have to learn to listen to the voice in, inside of you to say, I belong in this room and not allow yourself. So what I have been speaking even to the ladies that have come after me is do not allow people to self-exclude, right? So sometimes it's not that people will say leave, but they will allow you to feel so uncomfortable that you walk out with your own two feet. So how I try and foster that culture is constantly to, to reaffirm in myself that I belong in this space, that someone um, also was in the space. So when I have failures, which is part of life, when you fail in a space where you already don't feel like you belong, th those failures sometimes are amplified. And even to yourself, you don't have someone saying, actually, I also failed, but I'm here. So well, how I culture the culture, first, um, the culture in my department is I, I reassure the ladies that, listen, you're not the first person to fail in this, and you will not be the last. When you fail, yeah. you stand up and you try again. Trust me, the professors that are 20 years into the field also were one year into the field making the same mistakes, and they had to also try and fail. So it is, it is a learning experience. Like I said, when you go in, you're not thinking, when I qualified and became the first African female neurosurgeon in this province, the, the celebration was not something I was thinking of. I, I, wasn't, I didn't even know that that was a thing that was going to happen. My mind was focused on I need to qualify. In fact, when I look at some of the pictures back then, I want to delete them off the internet <laughs> because I looked like how I felt inside. I was tired. I was exhausted emotionally, physically. But the, the process of all of that allowed me to be gracious with my failures and to be able to celebrate myself. I teach the ladies... Even when you fail, celebrate that as a lesson learned and make yeah. sure that you do not repeat, repeat the same it. mistake. Yeah. So I try and live in that space and be honest because sometimes I have found that people are not honest about the struggles only when you see the celebrations. Yeah. And so everyone thinks you come out as a diamond. There's no rough, you know, the pressure that say, they say builds the diamond. Yeah, yeah. No one mentions that pressure. And so you automatically think everyone is a Mandela at the end or everyone is an <laughs> Oprah. But that's not the truth, right? We know. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so I, I think how I foster it, I am as real as I possibly can be. I try with the ladies and the men that are in the department to show that other side that showing vulnerability is not weakness. It's actually yeah. strength because then I say, even in my weakness, I've made it. Therefore, it means I can achieve even more. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Shazi, I think you should be really proud of that first picture and actually take it as a memory to remind yourself every single day of how far you've come. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think what's absolutely uh, amazing about that as well is, is that if you're absolutely passionate about what you do and it's true to you, I don't think it matters what happens around you. Because imagine wasting your time worrying about what other people think about you and they're trying to make you fail. A lot of people are going to try and make you fail because they get the pleasure out of it. Why? Because they don't actually have a goal or a plan or a dream. And you have. So I think what's absolutely awesome is that you persevere, push through it, and uh, making a difference in people's lives. Mm. Well done. Now, Lindsay, I mean, we, we're hearing Dr. Shazi speaking about those diamond in the rough times, you know, before the shine comes out. What has driven you? What's driven your passion so much throughout your career? Um, this is on. Um, I actually, everything you've pretty much said, I would also mirror. Um, I think I've also gone through um, life. I'm, I'm about all about the people and the planet and inefficiencies and ineffectiveness. So when I see anything to do with waste or anything that's not right, and the, um, the huge gaps, the, when we spoke about bridging gaps earlier, the um, diverse areas that we come from, from we, I deal with a lot of corporates and obviously a lot with all the rural areas, so, and I've got to bridge the gap because we can't work one without the other. 
but I certainly don't bite my tongue. I don't, certainly don't have my hair done or I generally have no shoes on. And I storm into wherever I need to go and just say, I'm sorry, we need to talk. And um, often it doesn't suit what I need to say, but then I say instead of like saying this is a problem, I've got a lot of empathy, let's find a solution and let's make this work. Um, I found I've made a big, quite a big impact in KZN in the, the, the work that I've done in, in the areas, both in the pollution space and then food rescue stuff. Um, and it has been incredible, but what's been insane is just the relationships on the ground in the communities that I've worked through many, many years to get to the stage that I can now go and work with business and corporates. And I'm like, hello. And they're like, oh, it's Lindsay again. We better <laughs> we listen to her. Though she be jumping on the, down the beaches, picking up plastic and shouting at us. But um, also because I come with solutions. Like, I don't, I, I, I don't care about anything else. It just, uh, there's always something in it for everybody in terms of goodness, not... Yeah who's going to get to the front of the race. And there is no, it, like it's all part of the journey. Mm -hmm. So um, I do go through lots of highs and lows and I'm faced with adversities every day, obviously being me who's maybe not the person you would expect to see at the front of, a, of the company that I uh, um, look after. But I've got the most incredible team below me and I'm determined to make every single one of them into one of me. They will know everything to know about <laughs> the environment, the pollution, <laughs> adversities, people's emotions and, um, what people go through to get to places. It doesn't matter what what colour, what what um, what rate, um, sex, if you're man or female, we all bleed the same. We all, yeah. if you hit me, I, we all hurt the same. So I can't, um, yeah, can't stress that enough. <laughs> A group of authentic Lindsays. <laughs> yeah, action orientated, like um, civil society. Yeah. yeah, we have to, and you've all got to be like it, get, be in the same thing. And I do think we have to. If, whether or not you like it, just you can go and build robots and IT and whatever you want to do in the digital space. But for me, it's all about <laughs> the plant and the environment. So I think I'm now. quite different to mm. building yeah. businesses and stuff. It's like yeah. what WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. Yeah. So I think also you find that people gravitate towards you because they love you for who you are. And I think that's what you'll find in your environment. If there's a misfit or a misconnection, it's purely because you're not aligned. and Again, if there's competition, you don't want to compete with one another, you want to compete with one another. So you've actually got to find your environments and the platforms that work for you. So not worry, you want the outcomes. Yeah. Do the action. I'm an action girl too. Yeah. Um, if you don't like it, sometimes you've got to, you know, you want the kill, you've got to do the hunt. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And well done. <laughs> now, um, SA, I did mention that uh, when I arrived in the Durban this morning, I saw a newspaper. And I'm like, who is this beautiful, effervescent woman? And I'm like, oh, Standard Bank KZN top businesswoman. And I just did not have um, the time rehearsing to come and read through your story. Can you elaborate to us your story? Because it seems quite intriguing and, and very interesting essay. Hang on. Uh, Good evening, everybody. No. Sorry. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you. I think it was a surprise being sitting here tonight. Um, I've listened to all the ladies that sat here before me, as well as the stories on the webinar. I have a different take to mine. I had started as a mom and a housewife, looking after three children. And my husband gave me the opportunity to start in, in the business world. He one day came to me and told me, we had a service station at that time, and he told me very calmly, please bank this money. Um, I, everyone knows how to bank money, right? We all do. So, yes, I sat at the table and I knew how to bank all the notes and Standard Bank, this is a story for you all because it was Standard Bank that we went to. Um, and then we had checks. Now, in the 90s, so you would guess my age, I decided to take all the checks and all the people with the same name, put them together, add up the totals, and put them as one number. And um, yeah, I thought it did a good job. Uh, my husband took the banking to the bank, and yes, he came back, 
and he wasn't impressed. So there was a rule, there was lots of rules in our marriage, but one that was really very strict was, don't embarrass me. And he went to the teller and wanted to know, how did you do this banking? Uh, it was a lesson that was my first in business, and it was something I never forgot, and that was almost 30 years ago. We then started with KZN Oils, which I do call the mother of um, our companies. Uh, she's pretty old, and we decided that he, we wanted to sell or get into the energy sector in KZN and later South Africa. We did that very successfully, and we decided to then move on and got an opportunity to start in the medical field, which was Champion Healthcare, and we decided to then manufacture bandages, tampons, and other medical products. Because he, we had heard that Smith & Nephew was going to close, and all the machinery and all the people that was used to work there and has reached retirement age was going to leave. So we found that was an opportunity and we opened our own factory and that is 11 years ago. It's run by a female and doing pretty well. Then decided we had to find another opportunity and uh, we then did a tender and Caltex was then deciding to put out a tender so that you could run certain service stations and buy certain service stations in the north of KZN and the south of KZN. We were successful for the north and got 28 service stations at, at that time, moved it to 37 and uh, grew it to 37 and then decided that we needed a logistics company because we weren't happy with the way prices were going with getting to, into the fuel industry, opened that, and KZN Logistics was born. So everything was running there, and I was obviously behind the scenes doing all the finance and putting in procedures and policies, and then decided there was another opportunity because Nando's was deciding to close their, or take back their franchise. So that's how Colet Chicken was born and that is a thriving business. We specialized in a certain process with our chicken, which allowed it to cook for eight minutes rather than 24 minutes on a grill. So that has done very well. Last but not least, we found an opportunity in the telecommunication center or the uh, field, and that's how JD Telecoms was, go was born. JD Telecoms then, we, I think the need for fiber or the need for telecommunications in the rural area was very important and we found that fiber was taking too long and that's how we decided let's get into the satellite business and put in see if we can get into Department of Education and get into see if we can get the schools you know um, and the hospitals in the rural areas connected so that is a very young company run by a female, uh, KZN Oils, which is a very large company run by a female. So in our group, 80% uh, of our group is run by females. I would take the 20% to be run by males, but that would be another story to tell. So, so Having said that, and to answer your question, we were very, very key to empowering women. I think that for me is my first love, um, getting women into the energy sector, into the fuel sector was um, challenging. I think for me right now, uh, very challenging because they listen to men rather than thinking that a woman would know about fuel and trading and getting in fuel, so that's something we're busy with right now. And um, having said all of this and introducing to you all a very vast and varied field that we decided to um, entertain or get into, I 
have to say one thing. It was all because of the opportunity and the vision of mail. So that's why I said tonight I'm just going to have a different um, take on the story. And um, yes, that's where we are tonight. Multifaceted, multifaceted. Molly, the word opportunity came up umpteen times. And you have to be ready for opportunity. And it, opportunity does come your way, but you don't see it. And it's all around mindset. It's, uh, do you want to be open to these opportunities or not? So where you can talk, I mean, if you just think of a typical day when you're talking to people, either they, oh, you know, life is so tough and never get any of these opportunities, but it's probably sitting right in front of you and you don't even see it. So you've got to be open to those, and that's why you've achieved so much, is because you've been ready for it and you embrace it, because it's not easy when you're taking an opportunity, there's a whole lot that comes with it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, I agree. Uh, but I don't think we've stopped. I think the yes. next project is also involving ladies. That is in agriculture, so we decided we want to go to Ladysmith and we wanted to empower because it's a very poor municipality. So we're gonna start growing hemp. Um, not to get high, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but to, for the benefit of your health. Because after COVID, you have to understand, people are now realizing that we need to look after our bodies and our mind first, and um, everything else comes after that. Yeah. So yes, I think we're gonna reach very far all the ladies Every lady, you can do whatever you want, any time you want. Yeah, absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are reaching the end of our celebration here this evening. I do, however, sit here and I wish I'd asked Abom Party, Sis Tandi, Sis Nomfun, and Sis Fatma to give us words of encouragement to the ladies here this evening. But I'm going to ask uh, Lindsay and Dr. Shezi uh, to please just imparting final words to the ladies here, key advices that you've learned on your journey. Um, thank you once more. Um, there's a lot of things that run through my mind, but I think the two most important things that I would encourage any person um, is one, know your identity. A good foundation of knowing who you are allows you to navigate even the darkest spaces that you can be in because if you, your foundation is not based on how people perceive you, if they see you as successful or if they see you as excellent. And then the next day, um, my father used to say, um, about people's opinions of you is that on day one people can build a huge throne of you for you of paper and when they are done with you they can light a small fire and it'll all crumble down meaning that if your character or your being is based on people's opinions you will never go very far you'll only go as far as people are willing to take you so the first foundation for any space that you you be you want to be in be it corporate or in my case public service um, in the form of um, health it is about knowing your identity so that you don't allow other people's dysfunction to determine your destiny. So when I say people's dysfunction, whether they look at your melanin, whether they look at your chromosomes that make you up, whether they look at where you were born, that's a dysfunction if someone looks at my gender and assumes my intellect, yeah. right? And I must not allow that to determine how far I go. So that's the first part, knowing your identity and not relating it to where you find yourself in life. The second part that has served me well is also having a vision for yourself. A vision, um, when I say vision, I mean have an end goal, even as you start, because there are a lot of distractions. Some distractions are good. Um, they seem good at the time, friends, uh, people's perception. Um, I think someone mentioned, um, I think it was um, the lady speaking, talking about um, you have to have a marriage, you have to have kids, you have to have this. People's perception of, of what you should be doing can in and of itself be a distraction to what you're trying to get to. Some distractions are bad and they can derail you. Sometimes it's your own personal failures, it's your own inadequacies in yourself. All of those things serve to either propel you forward or move you off the path. But if you have a vision, even if you deter away, and but you know where you're going, you will eventually go back on that path. So for me, the encouragement is not so much external things, it's inside. It is having a good foundation, 
having the people around you that see you as excellent. Um, I will end with that because I believe that the people that speak into your life will speak very far to how far you go. If you have people that have given up on their own personal journey, trust me, your failures yeah. will be amplified and your successes will be diminished. They yeah. will not feel comfortable to actually stand up and congratulate you. And mm. I have been fortunate to have friends and family that when I am in my darkest spaces, this week I had a horrible setback in one of the things I am uh, trying to do within my department. And having voices that say, listen, okay, it's painful, cry, vent, but actually it's gonna happen. It's very different than saying the world is so unfair, it's not gonna happen, you know, I also tried, let's just sit down. So having those voices speak into your life doesn't negate the failures, doesn't negate the setbacks, but it means that your vision is constantly, your eyes are constantly focused on, I'm gonna make it and it's gonna happen, and the people around you and behind you see that for you, and so when you are tired, as I was this week and discouraged, they are the strength for you, you're right? You don't want people when you go, oh my gosh, I wanna give up. They say, I think so too, it's about time. <laughs> Haven't you seen this is not gonna work out? So th that will be my last word of encouragement is just have the team around you or the people around you that see you as the excellence that you see so that they can speak into that future. Thank you. Lindsay. Um, I, think, I think for me, Sure, vision and goals. I just keep going. Um, I, I think for the biggest thing for me is leading with humanity. I just think you've really got to have humanity in you. And the one thing my team will turn around and say is the only thing that's predictable about Lindsay is she's completely unpredictable. So I do wear my heart to my sleeve. I will go in shouting and screaming, guns blazing. My team has seen me burst into tears in the six weeks during looting. I don't know what we thought we were doing. And we moved a thousand tons of food from a tent on get to one of the parks, Kings Park. And like, we just kept going and getting for it. And we just said, you guys are such soldiers. It was just, and I'm not in logistics, not supposed to be, I'm supposed to be feeding people. But it just, I just think you've just got to take every like opportunity again, just but with, a, with like a bull by the horns and, and go for it. And um, the only other, other thing is the like vulnerability thing within my emotions and feelings. If somebody looks at me, me funny, I'm saying, have you never felt like, crying no shame because that's you know it, it's so releasing so um, when, when I shout everybody knows that when I walk away I'm done like I don't bear grudges or anything but I'm only across because you've done something wrong and if you need to shout to me tell me because yeah. I also need to develop so don't put people on pedestals but I'm also surrounded by the most incredible tribe so one of my entities is waste action tribe and I've got such a tribe of fierce magnificent females around me I love their partners as well they're also cool <laughs> but we have girls to at times and we just totally like engulf each other so when it comes to my like connection with fa and love with family and friends and obviously my growth and contribution and stuff within my workspace as heavy as it is and it's non-stop and 24 7 there are just so many incredible stories at at the ground at grassroots level and stuff that that i feed off that i keep going so i just really think people need to lead with humanity and just wear your heart on your sleeve just have a bit of fun while you're doing it and yeah. so the two things i believe in is riding the wave it was like how are you at the moment i'm, like, I'm riding that wave just I'm, i'll get there on the other side and the other one is not waiting for the rain to pass and just learning to dance in the rain and um, not yeah learning to dance in the rain so that love for me it. is such a love it okay. love it love it is <laughs> Um, I just have one thing to say that I believe that as women we can do anything we've put our minds to. Anything that we want to accomplish we can. So whether we are young girls with dreams or women with ambition, there's nothing that can stop us. Mm. Unstoppable superheroes with us this evening. Now, Mano Singh is an executive head of insurance, asset management, and fiduciary Standard Bank, KwaZulu Natal. Manu Singh is proudly associated with Standard Bank Group within KwaZulu Natal. She describes herself as a perfectionist who puts all her passion into ensuring that she delivers whatever is required with excellence. Now, Mano has studied almost continuously her whole entire life while climbing the corporate ladder. She also believes that women should invest in their own networks in order to grow to establish a solid stand on strong support system in modern industry. Now, the core of her philosophy is that networks help facilitate 
and maximize success. This is Mano. As Standard Bank, we are delighted to be part of the KZN Top Business Women Initiative. It serves as an invaluable platform to celebrate women in the province who are pushing boundaries, chartering new territory and in the process creating a better life for all in KwaZulu-Natal. That said, I would like to commend and congratulate all the ladies who have gone before me this evening and shared their amazing and beautiful stories. We salute you. As we celebrate the achievements of KZN's women who are contributing to emphasizing a culture of gender empowerment and serving as inspiration for younger generations coming from an activist background, I feel it is important to take time to acknowledge the many women who have fought for women's rights and spearheaded movements that paved the way for us to have a voice and the right to influence change for ourselves and for others in society. On the 9th of August 1956, around 20,000 women marched to the Union buildings in Pretoria to protest legislation aimed at tightening the apartheid government's control over the movement of black women in urban areas. The march had far-reaching impact and became a significant milestone in the fight against the harsh realities of the apartheid regime. What this demonstrates is the immense power and unity when individuals from different backgrounds stand together to address a common issue. There is more likelihood of success of changing the status quo. We need to be mindful that much work still needs to be done. There are various societal problems that are directly impacting women in our country. We are seeing horrific acts of violence against women, children and men perpetrated by both genders. It is, however, the patriarchy that is deeply entrenched in our society that is contributing to the deep societal malaise. The issue of gender-based violence and femicide has become a national crisis and one that requires urgent action from all individuals, the corporate sector and government. Indeed, achieving success as a woman is no easy fate. There are multiple roles that we are required to fill. But the fact is that it is possible for us to make a meaningful contribution to society and to tend to our respective professional commitments and to take time away from those commitments in order to tend to our families. This balance is critical and should not deter any of us from achieving greatness. The Standard Bank KZN Top Women 2021 event has demonstrated that it can be. That if you have a dream or aspiration with the right support, determination and drive, no matter who you are or where you have come from, it is possible to reach your goals and achieve success. At the end of the day, the women who have shared their truly moving stories with us this evening serve as inspiration to others. As Standard Bank, we understand that women are a vital part of growing the industries across the province and the South African economy overall. This means identifying and supporting initiatives that inspire, empower, develop more women in the province of KZN and beyond. Standard Bank CEO Sim Shapilala explains why achieving gender equity is just plain common sense. Women embody half the world's talent, skill and energy and more than half of its purchasing power. So every sensible business leader must be committed to achieving gender equity in their company. The bank has since thrown its weight behind initiatives that not only state our commitment to driving change, but include actionable change. As such, our relationship and partnership with KZN Top Business Women is of critical importance as it fits in with our vision and mission to uplift women across societies and to drive gender parity. In recognition of the challenges in accessing both financial and non-financial support for female-owned businesses, Standard Bank set up the African Women International Impact Fund 
which aims to provide female business owners with access to capital, education and business mentorship. The fund's goal is to raise up to $1 billion over 10 years. Standard Bank's partnership with UN Women is also providing an opportunity to uplift women farmers in rural areas by helping to improve their productivity and development through climate smart initiatives and to promote opportunities for female farmers to move up the value chain. But to bring our focus back to KZN province, it must be noted that Standard Bank KZN is well invested in looking after businesses in this part of the country. We have various support mechanisms in place that can help make dreams, goals and aspirations a reality. These initiatives demonstrate the bank's commitment to supporting African women and driving inclusive economic empowerment in Africa. In this way, the Standard Bank Group is moving to make its mark as a bank that invests in people and encourages diverse economic change in the societies in which we operate. I thank you and wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you so much to Mano. Now, a lady which I literally look up to because she's so eloquent and she has put this all together for us to enjoy. I'd like to please welcome Gail Adlam of KZN Top Business for a vote of thanks. Gail, when it comes to this side. Thank you so much, Tato. Uh, we've really enjoyed the evening. and we It's always a vibe when I'm with you guys. It's great. And I'd really like to say once more, thank you so much to all the ladies and to everyone here who made this evening possible. We've really had an incredible journey over the last three months. It's been really amazing to get to know the different people through the narrative of your life stories. And I was also privileged to sit with you and listen to your stories. I was rather sad in the sessions that I had to miss through to other commitments. You've all traveled amazing journeys and have just have so much wisdom to offer other women. I know that I've learned a lot from each of you and I equally think that your stories really fulfill our theme, which is woman inspiring woman. And I was reflecting over the, the days of, of what your stories had to, to offer and what they said to us and what some of the pivotal points were in each of our lives and in my life because you so so much of what you said I was sort of played over and thought well how can I use this what can you know what can I say and I think it's as some, some of you said, you really have to stand up for yourself and be true to one to your oneself to ensure that you achieve and go forward. And it, it's really important to remember how much we have to offer others. So, so often we forget that. Equally, I think it's important to never be afraid of learning and the importance of acquiring knowledge. Just by listening to each other, we, we learn. So that's really important. So I really thank all of you for your commitment and passion in everything that, you, that you've done and all that you've contributed. So we are honored and humbled to be amongst you. At, at the end of the day, when you leave, there's a small gift for each of you. And we're also delighted that if you look inside your, your packets, if you'll find your, there's some memory sticks with the photos from your photographic session. So we're really looking forward to you to having those. And of course, you'll take your, your portraits with you. But I'd also just like to say thank you to everyone who's made this evening possible, to Nick Carroll, our photographer, Alan Patrick, our videographer, who spent many hours going through it, and I hope that you've all enjoyed the videos, which are online, and if you haven't already, go and watch them and watch some of the other, the other stories. Um, Neil and Andrew, who head up the IT team and are responsible for the streaming, we'd really like to thank them this evening. Praveena from Thoughtfire, who's responsible, and Kerry for this lovely setting and everything that's gone into it. 
And of course, our team at Top Business to Grant, Tracy, Kerry, Martin, plus the many others behind the scenes. Thank you, Marlene, for facilitating our webinars. Really do appreciate your, your effort. And thank you again, Tata, for guiding us through this evening. And of course, a very big thank you to Standard Bank and to the Standard Bank Kesedin team for the support of this initiative. We really do value and appreciate your contributions to ensuring that we can celebrate all these wonderful women in KZN. And just in closing, and then you can go and join a buffet supper, a quote from Serena Williams. The success of, of every woman should be the inspiration to another. We should raise each other up. Make sure you're very courageous, be strong, be extremely kind, and above all, be humble. I thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Carol. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, that was absolutely fantastic and beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us this evening online, coming through to Coastlands to celebrate the top women in business in KZN for 2021. Standard Bank, thank you for always making sure that you pull through. And most importantly, I'd like to say I am from the sports broadcasting industry, but every single time I spend time with Standard Bank and business and KZN top business, I go home feeling like a superstar and I could start a business I haven't as yet. Yet. <laughs> but I'm highly, highly inspired and highly, very, very grateful for spending time with you yet again. And finally, a single step obviously can change the way you live tomorrow. Your dreams have no limits. All you have to do is take that first step. A better tomorrow starts today. And how about now? From myself, Tata Muyeng, it's good night, take care and enjoy the evening. Africa means business. It's not just somewhere to invest. It's where we live, work, and build for the future. It's a beautiful continent whose resources need to be protected in order for her to grow. We believe that when you do business the right way, it can be as good for profitability as it is for sustainability. Which is why we're seeking businesses that align to our ambitions of promoting African growth through positive change. We're here for people, here for business, here for dreams. The kind of dreams that turn a signature on a dotted line into power for a classroom. Marking the beginnings of a blueprint for eco-friendly student housing. We're driving sustainable growth across the continent, not just because it's smart business, but because it cultivates the place that we call home too. Because to us, it's the human story that matters just as much as the business story. And if we write it together, the world will read of our success. Standard Bank. It can be.